Where's the coop? There. Can't see him. So this is Elsa Craig. Um, it's old. It's uh, old seed from last year, so I just sow more of it than I would normally sow it thicker. Uh, so it's it's a bulbing onion, a nice big onion, um, good reputation. Uh, so I'll sow it now. Press it down. Press the soil down because uh, it is quite bouncy. It's had some uh, manure um, compost. Uh, composted manure. Two inches of it on the soil as a mulch. And uh, so thinly um, because they're not thinly, don't, don't so deeply because it's it's um, small seeds and if they go too far underground they'll uh, rot away and you won't see anything so um, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna sow the lot. If it doesn't work, I re-sow later on. So next month. And then just sort of um, very lightly cover. Some people don't cover at all. They just make sure that the the, um, the seeds are in contact with the soil. And remember to mark it. Otherwise, give it two weeks, you can't remember what you've done. And date it. Merry Christmas, by the way. I've uh, got some indoor plants. Uh, this one on the left is uh, oregano, I think. It's checkers, something or other. And uh, keeping them alive over the winter indoors. Uh, we've got a dragon fruit, this is tough cactus. And the African um, burn jelly plant. There you go, there's the label. And then is it going to focus properly? No, is the answer. Uh, so it's not an edible, but it's a useful plant. Uh, and then we've got, um, which, is, which is edible, and it seems to quite like being indoors, which is the Vietnamese coriander, um, which is delicious. Uh, I love it. I think it's really nice. But I grow this in the garden during the the, uh, the season, and I'm experimenting with keeping it. I knew it was a perennial, but uh, uh, keep it indoors, and it seems to it's just doing all right indoors. He's a bit of a prune, but uh, there you go. I'm going to do some maintenance on my uh, indoor um, edibles, a um, bit of pruning, things like things like that. Um, I'll show you now. This uh, oregano is um, yeah, so we've got some dried out, drying um, stalks, so we we'll take those out. Tidy it up a little bit. It keeps uh, producing more and more stalks. There, um, these are getting these are getting uh, not quite dry, but are getting, are getting dry. So I'm going to cut these. It's 
not looking its absolute uh, best. I mean, it's it's winter. It doesn't like being indoors, uh, but nonetheless, um, we can keep it going by some pruning and watering and so on. Uh, it's in um, compost with mix of compost of um, mixing with um, half grit, half um, mature compost. Good stuff, not the bad stuff. We don't want woody stuff, and uh, so that allow free drainage and feed. Uh, so they're also everything's in um, ceramic pots um, because drowning is quite a um, normal thing in in winter for plants. So um, these pots will let uh, let moisture through. It'll bleed out through the um, through the uh, ceramics, as you can see. So I'll just put you down a little bit. You'll see it's coming through. Water's coming through uh, the pot there. Uh, this is the uh, the dragon fruit bitaya. It's um, it's a cactus. Uh, it's uh, it's trying to settle in in the in the compost, but it's not, it keeps flopping over. It's not happy, but I'm determined to keep it alive until uh, spring, where it should take off. But um, I've tied a little bit of a wire around around them to tie them together to make them stand up. But they do trail around in the wild and climb things. So. Um, but yeah, so I study them up, I get, uh, get them to get a bit more light. The uh, burn jelly plant has a, a, a few um, leaves that have got um, been burnt at the tips. I shall just take them out. Tidy them up a bit. I've got uh, two chilies uh, down here. Um, this one uh, in uh, in the foreground is uh, lemon drop. Um, I bought this from B and Q. Uh, probably, probably about three quid. Let's see what it says on there. Three quid. Uh, had a massive crop the first year. Had a massive crop this year. This is the second year. I'm hoping for a third year. It's a perennial, um, but it kept all its leaves um, last winter. It's only, as you can see, it's only kept some of the leaves this winter. Um, I don't know what I did wrong, uh, but it's still alive. Uh, it'll take off again. A lot of people, when they overwinter chilies, they'll lose all the leaves uh, or chop all the leaves off and it will just re-sprout in spring. You've just got to keep it frost free. Um, so, so it should do do all right for next year. But the um, I don't know what I did wrong with this one, but the one in the, full, the background, which is um, Brancio, which is over here and uh, it's kept all its leaves, it's a lush plant it's been ripening uh, on the indoors nicely it doesn't have a, a millions of um, chilies and they're not very hot either I, in fact I think it's a sweet pepper more than anything else but look it's kept all its leaves nicely but I brought this indoors from the greenhouse really late I brought this one in quite early um, who knows what I did wrong but um, Oh, it's still alive. This one is a massive cropper, uh, quite hot chilies, really good flavour, um, and they produce early, so yeah, it's good stuff. Well, cheers, cheers for that. I shall. Uh, thanks, thanks for watching. Uh, there's not a lot to do in uh, gardening wise, uh, January and February, uh, so it's um, so. Uh, uh, cheers, cheers, and I hope you all have um. Uh, the rest of the holidays uh, have a good good holidays so um so it's goodbye from me and asmodius uh, cheers and bye bye